It's like um the school that uh Tariq go to on power. Choke. Um. So it is, it is, you can see it as an Ivy League caliber, but I will tell you, it's far easier to get into a Yale and a Harvard than it is West Point. Oh, securing a bag, get that bag, and about the grind, the grind. There is no glory in that grind, y'all. I'm just telling mm. y'all. That's dope. Yep, them mm. nose and them closed doors that we cry about, it be God on the other side, like, I'm trying, I'm just, 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 just trying to, just, just pack your patience. <laughs> Yeah. Welcome back to the couch. <laughs> and we're excited, can you tell? We're excited to be here because we trash. have a special guest with us today. But before we introduce the special guest, we want to thank who you for tuning in with us every Tuesday at 9 a.m. right here on the couch. You guys are loyal and y'all come see. Y'all come visit us and see us and we thank y'all. Loyal and lies. <laughs> I just love May loyalty. Loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. Oh my God. So before we start, make sure you subscribe. Go ahead, I'll give you a second. All right. Send it to two people. Send this video to two people, okay? Because today is going to be life changing, okay? Because we have someone who will change your life, y'all. Wait till you hear the bio. Just wait. Um, and make sure that this money sign, I think it's on this side of the screen. It's down there. It's like a little money symbol. Press it. See what the Lord has in store oh for my you. Lord. The same way we got to give in church, we got to give now. This is offering time. So y'all just <laughs> drop some love. Drop some love her. in the live chat. Drop them green hearts. And y'all, we about to get started. Okay. So today we have Miss Tracy Lloyd in the building. Hi, on the Tracy. couch. Hello, ladies. Sup, Tracy. With her beautiful, <laughs> beautiful self. Thank you for coming and chilling with us My pleasure. on the couch. I know we're a little wild and rowdy because she real classy and sophisticated, y'all. Like, she got credentials and everything, okay? For real. So, with more than a decade of senior-level career experience in profit and loss management, change management, hold on, I'm not done, strategic planning and training development, Atlanta-based Tracy Lloyd has become an innovator and leadership trailblazer within the full spectrum of the retail sector. First Walmart's corporate, corporate that's the word, Pantheon. Next, Bloomingdale's. Then, JCPenney and LVMH. Louis Vuitton, Moet Hennessy. Girl, oh, okay. Moet Hennessy. <laughs> okay. Prior to her career in retail, she had a loft record of service with the United States military. Now she is serving as a partner in the marketing and management firm Lloyd Media Group, which is her and her husband. So we want to welcome Tracy Lloyd to the castle. Y'all show your love, give your green hearts and all the things. What's up, Trace? You have Instagram? <laughs> I do. You have Instagram? Trace. Oh, there's going to be below on the screen, y'all. So follow, follow her Instagram. Like, Trace, right what's your here. name on there? Let me follow Follow her it's Instagram long. page. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's long and I'm going to apologize in advance. It's chic underscore mode underscore oat. Okay. It's right there. What, what is it. that? Why did they you pick? What did you, <laughs> right here. Why did you pick that name? Curious. It's just it's so chic mode. Oh, you know I'm in fashion and it's all those things to deal with. You know, Wait, you in fashion? Chic mode. She's in fashion oath. too, but they didn't let me get that part of my own. Y'all so. O h a u t e. So chic underscore mode underscore o. And you said. H what? Didn't H -A -U -T, come up. That's how you say that. Oh, mm -hmm. you know what? Don't worry about it. That's I'll find it. But most people hot. say hot hope. It's yeah. French, and the French don't pronounce the H if it's in front of a vowel, so it's silent. It's just oat. And you speak French and Spanish, right? Correct. Girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's have some fun, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the book so of the credentials. Who you, tell people who Tracy is. Tracy, okay, so I am the daughter of Bobby and Gail. Uh, I uh, grew up in Milwaukee, uh, two-parent home up to the age of eight, and then I was raised by my father from, you know, eight. My parents got back together when I was 18, so single parent. Uh, I was eight, my sister's 10, my brother was two, 
And so I uh, was that middle child, you know, I said mm -hmm. the middle child isn't special. So you spend your whole life trying to over index, right? <laughs> trying to get the spot like from it. the oldest of the babies. It's like that though, but mm -hmm. it serves us well, right? It, does, it serves sure. us well. Uh, and so uh, I grew up, um, I grew up in the hood and um, it's something that I'm very proud of because it shaped the woman who I am. Mm -hmm. We are the sum of our experiences. So if you're happy with who you are and how you show up today, you have to embrace all those experiences up to that point. And I will tell you that my grit, my tenacity uh, comes from my father. You know, we would wake up in the morning and we would see breakfast, but we wouldn't see him because he would be gone from work. And by the time we were in bed, he would get home once we were asleep. So my father was always grinding, but he was always providing. And that was just something that was instilled in me. And um, I remember in the seventh grade, there were some kids from Marquette University came up to the school and they were like, hey, if you go to college, you know, you can come out making 70K. I went home excited, like, ah, oh, dad, I know how we don't have to live in the hood anymore. Like, I got the plan. Like, mm -hmm. we about to all come up. And I started telling him about college. And he was like, well, here's the thing. College costs money. And I was like, wait a minute. So, like, if you in the hood, like, this is like, you can't do better. If you need money, like, mm -hmm. I need money to live better. But you're saying I need money to go to college. Thank God my father grew up on a farm in Mississippi, so I don't know how he knew about scholarships, but he did. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, he did. And these are words that rang true to me, and I will never forget. He said, Tracy, if you play every sport you can play, if you can get every A you can get, schools will pay you to go to that college, which was his way of saying scholarships. Mm -hmm. So from that point on, seventh grade, I was locked in. If I got a B, I cried. And this was through high school. God, you sound like me. Because I thought that was the thing that was going to keep me from being able to change the wow. trajectory of my family. And so um, by high school, senior year, I was a captain of basketball, track and tennis. Uh, went to state in track. Uh, was a 3.8 student. And that's how I ended up at West Point. And kind of the rest is history. And, and here you are today on the couch with us. Kegging it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here on the couch, we focus on healing in every way, including our finances. Financial peace of mind is important to me, and that's why I bank with Chime. Chime is an award-winning app and a debit card with no hidden fees or monthly minimums, y'all, and y'all know we need that. It's the banking of the future since it's 100% mobile and online. Chime offers a ton of awesome features. Users get fee-free overdraft on up to $100 in debit purchases with Spotly. It's like overdraft protection, but way better. You can get your paycheck, benefits, stimulus check, and tax return up to two days earlier with direct deposit. Come on, y'all. They have automatic saving features where you can automatically save a percentage of your paycheck or you can round up your purchases made with your debit card and save that amount. There are no hidden fees or no monthly minimums. This is a steal. Y'all, start banking with Chime today. So sign up for a Chime checking account today to link your paycheck. It only takes two minutes and it doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com forward slash TCWJ. That's Chime.com forward slash TCWJ. So when you say West Point, we want to talk about West Point because many don't know what West Point is and how uh, competitive mm -hmm. it can be. So can you break that down because she's one of the few black people, black women who graduated from West Point. It's like and in that's the one percentile, right? Absolutely. The black people was like 3% and then you said black women was just in the 1%. Mm -hmm. So yep, um, uh, black, is, uh, black people as a whole from you look at the totality of graduates, about 4% of total grads are black. And then when you look at black female, it's 0.75, so to your point, not even a 4%. Wow. Okay. So, because um, Bay was put me on to West Point because, of course, I wasn't uh, aware. Um, but he was like, it's like one of the top school, military schools in mm -hmm. America. So yes. So West Point is actually uh, joy known as being one of the top leadership institution in the world. So while I was there, you had the heads of states from other countries would send their kids to attend West Point. Oh, wow. So you were building friendships and relationships with future leaders around the world. It's like um, the school that uh, Tariq go to on power. 
Choke. Oh. Choke. So it is, it is, you can see it as an Ivy League caliber, but I will tell you, it's far easier to get into a Yale and a Harvard than it is West Point. Well, you gotta because win. you have to get, you have to get a um, congressional nomination or presidential or vice president nomination. And each of them only get a set amount of people that they can give those to. And you were chosen she was chosen. How was birth. that? Like I wanted, like so, because I did, I did not. I went to a few colleges, but how was that experience for you when you found out I'm getting into West Point, or just what before? I said it right, West Point. What was like that moment? Where you like, how were you when you they said you were accepted, or you got? A, did you get a letter from the president, the congressman? So, so my story was not as glamorous. Oh, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, I put, so the summer, I did the summer before I worked for Senator Feingold's office and because I knew I needed that nomination as well. And I, um, you know, my parents aren't, mm -hmm. pop, you know, politicians or we weren't upper crust. And so I knew I had to grind my way through it. And so I spent the summer um, as an intern. Uh, but when it came time for my packet to be submitted and for the nomination, um, you know, Senator Feingold was like, well, we think it's an unfair advantage for us to do your interview and push you forward because people in this office know you and they all love you. And I'm thinking like, like, when was that ever an issue? Mm -hmm. Like, you're supposed to know people that. Right. And so I was like, OK, I got it. So, you know, I had to then go to Senator Herb Cole, who Republican. And I was like, what are my chances mm -hmm. of getting in? Right. And so I hand walked my um all of my paperwork, this is before the days of emails and all the things. I walked into his office and um, I'm very sure that they took it and threw it in the trash. Like I didn't even get a call. You're supposed to at a minimum call, do an interview, invite mm -hmm. me in for an interview. I didn't even get the interview. And so I'm waiting and time is going by and I'm like, oh, well, I haven't gotten my call. What's going on? So I called the office and they were like, oh, well, we've already selected our people for the academy for this year. And I'm like, what do you mean? But I didn't get in. I was like, I didn't get a call. And they were like, well, we never received yours. It must have got lost in the e in the mail. I'm like, no, ma'am. I no, know. I, I said all the time. Right. right. I right. walked this to your office, personally handed it. I said, I probably, well, you're probably the person I handed it to. And so, you know, I just had my moment of just, you know, I, I was just crying my eyes out because this is something that I really wanted and I worked hard for. Um, and... Uh, I just didn't give up. So I started opening up, what was it, the white pages, yellow pages, whatever it was back then. Mm -hmm. And I just looked up West Point and I started calling every number at wow. West Point. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, you know, how is it, every leadership qualification, you have to take a, um, it's like a, a athletic test as well to get in. I was top of the charts on those. I was indexing on the men's scale, not just the women. And so I had all the leadership skills. I was class president, excuse me, class vice president, student council president. Like I said, captain of all three sports. They're all the things that mm -hmm. I was supposed to do. Um, and I was like, there's no way I'm not being considered for West Point. And so I just started calling all the um, numbers and finally got transferred to admissions minority. I didn't even know there was a minorities office wow. at West Point and they were like Tracy we just lost track of you you had such a strong profile that we just knew you were a shoe in and I was like well y'all lost track of me and now I'm not coming and I was just like y'all should have <laughs> kept a closer pulse on mm -hmm, me mm -hmm. and they were like well typically you know those that the grades aren't quite there we have mm -hmm. to kind of work more with to help them through but your credentials are so strong we figured you'd be a shoe in and I was just like so what does this mean am I not going to West Point they were like well they've closed it for a class of 20 uh uh, 2002. Uh, so, you know, you can't get in. It was like, but you can go to a, a normal college and then come back and start over. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's nah. right. Right. That's like, we, there's got to be better options. Right. And so that's when they um, offered up the prep school. They were like, well, we do have a prep school. And I was like, well, what is that? They were like, well, you'd go there for a year. Uh, typically, people go there if they need strengthening academics. Uh, a lot of times, uh, they'll send uh, the athletes there because you get another year to play sports, but it doesn't count against you mm -hmm. for your four years. Or if you don't have any military background. I said, you know what? That's perfect because I don't have a military background. So I'll go there and this will give me a year up. And, and I said, but if, you know, once I graduate from here, am I automatic? They're like, you will automatically 
getting to West Point. I said, mm-hmm. okay, so then now I'm betting on myself. Right. And I'm not having to rely on someone else to, you know, whether they want, you know, allow their biases or discriminations or whatever it may be, keep me from this opportunity. So I rode into the prep school and, you know, did my year there. And it was great because then you start that next year at West Point and you know, over a hundred of your classmates off top, you oh, built wow. a relationship mm-hmm. with, which allowed me my first year to come in and run for vice president and win vice president of my class. So as a freshman, I was briefing a one-star general on a monthly basis. That's um, fire. But, so, but, That's real but you know, but I also learned how to shine shoes, you know, make my bed, all mm-hmm. those things that allowed me to show up day one like ready to hit the ground running where I would not have been that prepared. So if you would have gotten it's, that person. It's God. Thing. It's God. Yeah, that's dope. Yep, them mm-hmm. nose and them closed doors that we cry about, it'd be God on the other side. Like, mm-hmm. I'm trying, I'm just just trying to just get you. Trying just pack your bills, patience. You're, right. <laughs> you're not that yeah. ready. You think you are, right. but you're not. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful story. Okay, so um, after... Gra- graduating from West Point, um, was how was that like getting through? Was it a breeze mm-hmm. or was it, and, and being one of the few black people there, was that ever an issue ever in, in West Point? Mm-hmm. So Joy, I wouldn't say that, you know, color felt like it was an issue. It wasn't. Okay. Um, I enjoyed my time. I know everyone can't say it, mm-hmm. um, but I enjoyed my four years. Was it tough? Hell yeah, it was tough. It was there were some days where I was just like, what am I doing? Okay. Like my best friend, you know, she was down um in Louisiana, you know, having a great time. I had, you know, friends all over there pledging and they're like living a life. Mm-hmm. Um Did you pledge? And I, I did. She's an AKA. I did. I did. It was at the bottom of the I did. Um and so um I was just like, I should be having fun. But instead, I'm up at five o'clock in the morning and I'm running five miles. Like, mm-hmm. Tracy, look at your choices. It's like, <laughs> hey, what are you doing? You know, when you're 19, 20, sure. you don't see the big picture, mm-hmm. right? You just see kind of what's in front of you. But I just knew that I was like, nope, this opportunity is amazing. And this is really what I want. And anything worth having doesn't come easy. So I just had to dig deep and just mm-hmm. show up strong every day. Okay. So after, let's talk about after West Point now, okay. um, all the beautiful credentials that you've acquired. <laughs> um, what do you do today? Mm-hmm. What do I do today? Yes. Yes. So I am <clears throat> actually pivoting. Okay. Um, yep. So I am going into the um, broadband um, infrastructure IT. So in the Army, that's what I did. My claim to fame is I built the first secure fiber optic ring in Baghdad. So that was my claim to fame in the Army. And so I'm taking that that understanding of infrastructure and bringing it over um, now to what I'm doing. When you look at the broadband deserts, uh, people talk about rural America. But there's a real problem in our inner cities. And so you talk about also this digital divide. Like to me, this is a civil rights issue. Mm. If we don't get this infrastructure in the ground and make um, get Internet accessible to more to our people specifically, we're going to further just get behind. And so to me, this is a civil rights thing. And so Mm -hmm. I'm um, I've been doing retail and I'm pivoting out of retail now back into the IT space uh, because it's 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 the work that's needed uh, specifically for our people. So when you say uh, in the you say inner city Atlanta, Every, uh, like no, there's inner cities all over the U- U.S. And where there you can't access internet. Yes. Really? Thank you. Most people. Don't I promise you, I that. did. That's why I was like, wait, I gotta yes. re- rewind that. Yes. Where is there not internet? Yes. Like, um, and, uh, well, why is that? I guess. Um, I mean, they don't have the infrastructure. The infrastructure isn't there. Um, so, and, we, so when you, I'm sorry, I'm because. Mm-hmm. So when you say infrastructure, is that like a tower that sends a signal? What's an infrastructure? Is that a system? That's part of it. That's part of it. Well, you have to lay, you have to be able to lay cable, right? Or fiber optic Mm. cables. and, And so have that. So as we're going into 5G, 5G, the infrastructure to carry 5G is different from what we've had before. And gotcha. you can't just lay that on top. Like, you've got to rip that up and relay. So, in essence, we're relaying the entire, like, infrastructure for IT in order to be able to have 5G and above. You go over into Asia, psh, it's nothing. Like, they're so ahead of us 
And 5G, what that en enables and allow you to do from a technological standpoint is amazing. And until we get that in the ground and in place, we're putting ourselves behind as a country. So we're putting ourselves on the world stage. We're putting ourselves behind. But even as a country, we're behind. As a people, we're even further behind. Mm -hmm. And so we just need people to really stand in that gap and close that gap um, so that we can um, get competitive and stay competitive. So this is what you and your husband are building now? Yes. How'd you meet your husband? Um, Miguel! <laughs> I'm gonna need you to uh, insert in computer love. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we actually met on MySpace. That's Let's cute. take you way back, That's right? Cute. We actually met on MySpace. Yeah, so I was uh, in the Army and I was just, I was moving from New York to um, Savannah, Georgia, and he mm. had just moved from DC to Jacksonville. And he was just, you know, it was like, well, not really feeling the Jacksonville vibe. Mm -hmm. Let's let's cast the net a little wider. And then he found me, and you know, we, I kept him on. You know, I just wasn't feeling it because I, I felt people was like on my space was just like creepy people. Mm -hmm. And I was only on there because my best friend went to Afghanistan. And that was the easiest way for us to stay in, in touch. And so she was like, get a MySpace page. And I was like, why? There's just creeps, you know, <laughs> pedophiles, people wear white shoes. Like, I don't oh want. <laughs> Not the white shoes. I was like, I don't want. to white like, penny loafers. Right. That part, <laughs> see, you know. So I was like, I don't want to be on, on MySpace. And so she was like, you can lock down your profile in a way. Mm -hmm. Well, clearly I didn't lock it down properly because he still found me. Thank Aww. God. <laughs> right. And uh, we kind of talked for a few months, and finally we went um, on a date. We had lunch together, and from that point on, we've been inseparable. So October will be 15 years, and we've been married. Oh, what day in October? Just curious. Uh, eight. Oh, okay. Her birthday's the fifth, mine's the 15th. I'm sorry. So, uh, sorry, Miguel. The 12th, 2008. <laughs> 2008. Sorry, Miguel. He's like, wait a minute, the 12th. Hold on. Miguel, hold on. Don't, wait. No, no, no. Don't hold it against us. Right. Don't hold it against us. Okay, that's cute. Okay, I have to go back though, because this internet thing kind of struck a little chord with me. Um, thank you for it. That's all I wanted to say. Because I, seriously, because I don't know if anyone that's listening might have known that there was an internet in certain places or even just enough to be competitive or to have knowledge or to be ahead. Because mm -hmm. I'm thinking, we all got 5G. Mm-hmm. No, it's a privilege. You know, it's but, a so privilege. I appreciate y'all really Even being standing in that. the gap for us Just in that way. Thank you for being thoughtful enough as a person to even consider that right. other people don't have access to these right. same things that we that's readily available, available to us. us. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a big yeah. emphasis on your heart. You know, Aww. like you know, being, being, doing need. community no, work, no, no. like com it, because it's needed, and a lot of people don't even think about it. They just think right. the world just know runs the issue. and turns it's on its own, up. and it doesn't. Yeah. And well, what you made you even think that? Like, what's it? What made you say, oh, you know what? There is no <laughs> internet right here. Like, what was that moment? Well, was, you during the pandemic when you would go, you drive past Walmart and you see cars where kids are in there doing homework or you mm. go into a fast food place and you see kids in there doing homework, it became more visible during the pandemic when mm. everyone had to go virtual. So I've that's seen when it started. Got it. That's, when, that's when I started noticing Got it. it. That's Did when you I started see, noticing um, it. It was a video recently that went viral. It was a little boy. I want to say he was in Ghana. Mm. Oh, yeah. So he that's was his homework outside. Outside, down the street outside, mm -hmm. doing Where his homework under the light. Because he didn't have internet in his house. Mm -hmm. Like, that's he electricity. Right. E electricity, yeah. right, in his house. But even being outside, he was still able to access what he needed to access outside of his house. Mm -hmm. That was crazy to me. So do y'all see y'all, your company just doing nas nationwide or y'all trying to do worldwide? What are we doing? You know, well, mm -hmm. I, I will tell you that... Um, I'm open to wherever God has us, mm -hmm. right? And I'm okay if this is just a season, right? Uh, it's just, it's work that needs to be done. And I will tell you that I want to focus on uh, my country first. Mm -hmm. You know, I, um, America is imperfect, but I will tell you it is far better than many countries. Mm -hmm. It is. It's far better than many countries. And because I am an American um, and I've served protecting this country, I have the absolute right to critique you when we're not doing what we're supposed to be mm -hmm. doing, 
you you know, when there's areas that we need to improve, we should be okay and open with saying, like, this is where we suck as a country. This is where we need to do America, do better, be better. Mm -hmm. And you're still an American for saying that. Mm -hmm. You know, some people try to make you feel better, like, you're not, you know, you're not, you're not patriotic. patriotic. Right, <laughs> like, get out of here. No, I'm just not a mindless drone. Like, right, right. <laughs> I got it right. Yeah. If something ain't right, we need to call it out and we need to fix it and, 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 and dare to be better. And so um, that's an area, again, we as a country, if we want to be, uh, you know, top top five, we got to get stronger from an infrastructure standpoint. And then, like I said, specifically our people, that's where my passion is, you know, closing the gap with, you know, within our own community. And so that's where mm -hmm. I want to start. OK. Oh, I want you to I want you to look at this camera because you're so wise and. Um, talk to, I guess, give a message to a woman who is from the hood and doesn't think that anything could come from that. And um, just an encouraging word to say, keep going. It may not look good now, but because you look good now. Oh, well, yes. That's what I've been through. <laughs> Daughter, I appreciate God that. is good, for real. All the time, Jerry. I yeah. you, you couldn't have, I would have never just thought on my own, oh, she came from the hood. That's why I'm listening, listening to your story like, whoa. Yeah. You no, got a lot no. of credentials. Yes. Absolutely. Um, so I would say to you, sweetheart, that um, God has put in you everything that's needed to be your best and highest self. You, you know, have to be the author of your life. You have to dig in and you have to find those gifts and you have to nourish those gifts. You also have to have the strength to weed out those things that are strangling those gifts or keeping those gifts from growing. Now, whatever that may be, it may be uh, people in your life, right? It may be just bad habits, right? Uh, oh, I also say, Jordan's. you know, absolutely. And so you got to make a plan, make a plan and pray on that plan, you know? And if, you know, whomever, you know, your, 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 you know, who you pray or whoever that is that is bigger than you, you know, you need to lean into that. For me, it is God. I'm a Christian. And, uh, there, there comes a time where you have to, you know, where your faith may be questioned, right? Because of your circumstances on the flip side, you may be living well and you're forgetting that just because God breathed air through you today allowed you to do what you're doing. And so you can't get to the place either where you become so full of yourself that you forget that it's God that is sustaining you. Mm -hmm. And so there has to be a restoration of faith when you're going through it. And when things are great, because, you know, it's easy when things aren't good to call on God. But when things are great, you forget that it is he that is making that the allowing door. Way, yeah. All right. He's opening up doors. He's the one, you know, down to, like I said, just breathing life in you for you to do what you do day mm -hmm. to day. And so um, just never forget where, you know, your strength comes from. Lean into it and just don't forget that everything is already in you. You just have to nurture it and bring it out and and, and grow it. That's dope. Y'all got anything y'all want to ask? So, yeah, I'm curious. Are there certain things that you um, learned at West Point that you implement still now and with your kids? Like, I know you said you got up at yeah. five and was <laughs> running and stuff. <laughs> My dad was military, so, so you I know. have some stuff that, that he does that I do now, and I didn't even think about it, but I picked up a, along the way. So are there certain things that your kids do that you see like, oh, that? So I, I will tell you that I preach with my kids integrity. Uh, integrity is so important. And, um, and not that I necessarily learned that at West Point, but West Point has a thing called the Cadet Honor Code. And it's a uh, cadet will not cheat, lie, nor steal, nor tolerate those who do. And so I like that. taking that in with my kids, it's just like that comes down to your word and living integrity. Mm -hmm. And so that is something that I preach with uh, our daughters. Uh, and even when they do something they're supposed to and I know they don't want to tell, I say, listen, I can get over whatever you did. But if you lie to me, mm -hmm. our whole relationship the changes, dynamics. our entire relationship, the dynamics. Yeah. I said, yeah. so whatever you did, 
it can never be bigger than your word mm-hmm. and mom's ability to believe what's coming out of your mouth. Right. So I'm going to ask you again. That just answered the question I asked you over there. So what do I say? And that's good mm-hmm. to make integrity the yeah. the conversation there you go. and not think that they don't understand it. Mm-hmm. Right. Because they do. Because half the time we're oh, thinking they don't They're understand taught this. integrity at a very early age mm-hmm. in school. Like you learn integrity. You just don't know that it's integrity, mm-hmm. but you learn it very early on in, in school to and walk by it. Absolutely. And and take that everywhere you go, not just in school, but at mm-hmm. work and mm-hmm. with your friends, with your family, with your mom, Embodied. your dad. You yeah. have to you have to have that. Yeah, because you'll do anything without it. That's true. That is true. Ain't no more cold. Just <laughs> yeah, here. you out here living. Yeah. Wow. And you said you have three daughters. Yes. And yeah. What are their ages? So twenty three. So we're a blended family. Okay. Yeah, so we're a blended family. My oldest daughter, my stepdaughter, Saran. Uh, when I met Miguel, Saran was six. Mm-hmm. So she's my stepdaughter, but let me be clear, that's my baby. I got you. <laughs> that's my baby. Um, she just recently graduated from Clark. We're super proud of her. So oh Saran, God. we call her Ronnie. She's 23. Then we drop down to Michelle, who's 11, and Layla, who's 10. Question, real quick. Yeah. What does your stepdaughter call you? My tray. That's we cool. had because we just had the last <laughs> we, just, ever, we just had the last episode we just filmed when you walked in. Mm-hmm. That was the that was the um, point the topic. Should a bonus child call the, the bonus parent, the bonus parent, mom or dad? Mm-hmm. And because my son is he lives with his father in Nashville, mm-hmm. um, and he calls the bonus mom, mom, mommy. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't discussed, and we were all kind of having a discussion about mm-hmm. should it be mm-hmm. a thing and it makes me feel horrible I'm not gonna lie mm-hmm. like it makes me feel horrible but my tray is cool I like that because it doesn't it doesn't give off anything but this is who she is to me but mommy is so dear and near yeah. it's like so it's learning how to listen or hear him say mommy and he ain't talking to me can I offer up something For, of course, please <laughs> so um so being on both sides because mm-hmm. uh I have a half brother um and his mother, um, I would call mom as well. Mm-hmm. And I remember as a child, uh, anytime we would go visit um, them in Mississippi, my mom and um, his mom were cool. To the point like when we would go, we, we would stay on a farm with my grandparents. We would go and stay at my um, half-brother's with he, he and his mom. And so I remember waking up, I was probably, I don't know, maybe four years old, I woke up. And they were both in the kitchen making pancakes. And something happened. I was like, Ma. And they both said, yes, baby. I felt so loved as a child. Mm. I felt so loved. That was like an indelible moment. Something so innocent of mm-hmm. just that. It's, and I think of all the things that I've gone through, how that was such a warm moment for me. So I would offer up that it is kids... They shouldn't be put in the middle of what happened and didn't happen with adults. Mm -hmm. And I think the most important thing is to put them in an environment where they feel protected and safe. On both sides. On both sides. Mm -hmm. And even though I I can only, as you say that, I'm I'm thinking of Michelle or Layla ever saying mommy to someone else, how that must feel and how I would feel. But then I also lean into the unselfishness of my mom to allow that woman to feel that comfortable and me to feel that comfortable. Mm-hmm. But your mom to be feeling able secure to enough. She was secure enough. She was secure enough. Was secure enough. And they were a partner. And, and they, they were, were cooking breakfast they together. Were they are a partnership. They were actually yeah. blended. We are yes. now healthily blended. We are now working towards one goal as together, a whole. Together, yeah. Right. And that's to raise these kids that's the right, right way. Yeah. If that's not happening, then I'm going to feel some type of way with my kid calling you mom and yes. or you forcing my kid to call you daddy. I, there's Because we're not on the same team, really. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You doing you as your parent. I'm doing me as a parent. Right. You got to come together and make it make sense. They standing in the kitchen cooking. They ain't no shade right. nowhere. Right. We cooking. Everybody eating. Yep. And everybody had, and we mm-hmm. both had a and hand in it. it's all love. It's all love. It's all, it's all love. Real and, love. And here's the thing. Not, not to <laughs> pretend like they're, I'm sure there was some drama. Of course there was. Yeah. But, but they got I to a never play. felt it. I never <laughs> and felt never it. And it. I never saw it. I never knew about it. And all I remember was feeling lucky as a kid to have wow. another mom. I and that's like, all I wanted for I, got, my son. I was like, I got two moms. Like, two people who are going to hold me down and love me. Like, that, mm-hmm. like, 
the the room just got bigger mm-hmm. in that moment. And it was a small kitchen, but it felt like a mansion mm-hmm. because of how much love was in that room. And so I would just offer that up and like, and that's just, you know, and that's also just prayer or getting to a place where you're like, it doesn't hurt. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and where there is some hurt, let me put that into my child feeling whole and happy. Yeah. That's all I can do. That's like, that's the only focus is yeah. making sure. And I always, always tell him because, you know, he just found out what bonus is from school. Mm-hmm. And someone's like, well, that's not your real mom. You know, and mm-hmm. he was just like, well, I have a biological mom. I have a bonus mom. And, you know, he, he tries to explain it. But I'm just like, you got two moms, Paul. Yeah, two moms. And that's it. You got two Christmases. You got two homes. You got two grandmas. You got that's two. Beautiful. I was like, you just got two of everything. And and it's it's needed that both sides say the same word. Yes. And if one side is You're not right. saying the same. The more, right. if both sides ain't saying the same. Because the more prevalent Ooh. side is saying something opposite, that's what he's going to go yeah, with. He's going to be like, my time. mama tripping. So, yeah. but okay. Well, you turned out great. So that's, oh. that's hope for, I mean, just be honest. She did because no. she, they were on the same page. But, and then too, I feel like God being the center of it all too, uh, of her life. Yeah. You know, she And her mama that. life, because her mm-hmm. mama leaned on them too. Her, her bonus mom leaned on them too. And they both had to put themselves yep. outside of the situation and mm-hmm. put God first and put the well-being of the child first. They had a mature sure. enough conversation yeah, and relationship to. to where we I all love these kids. I, 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 I love how y'all saying they but had But I will enough. also <laughs> say, though, that mm-hmm. it took my father stepping up and saying, and saying he wasn't yeah, going to tolerate nothing no different. Right. There you exactly. go. Right. And so Correct. let's, so let's, let's so I said, let me be really clear that if dad wasn't in the middle saying that this is what it's going to be, it probably would have been a little bit more It could have been. So, yeah. Because that was my that was my whole childhood like my dad had um married before my mom so we're me and my siblings are the last set of three and there were three before us Mm -hmm. but i didn't recognize and we didn't know until i got to about ninth grade and somebody Mm -hmm. tried it you know they Mm -hmm. your sister and i'm like this is my sister they was like but she dark skin you light skin and i was like hmm so i went home i was like dad that's not my real sister he said it is your real sister and the way dad we are i never went to my mama Mm -hmm. mama so what you Dad, what's going on? And the way he had us together, I was at her mama's house, didn't even know like that. Like mm-hmm. I'm at my well, that's sister's, how you, mom, you know? Right. And it goes to say my daddy kept it all. Good. And that's what I'm used to. Good. So when it's not happening, I'm like. But that's what it takes a mature grown Ooh. man to say ain't going to be no mess when it comes to these kids. Period. Mm-hmm. Point blank. Period. If you like that, it's going to be mess. Women, we mess. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but hey, these niggas, it's mess too. There are two, but it, like I said, in in her situation, and, and even in mine, the man said it ain't gonna be no mess when it come to her. It's not gonna be no mess when it come to my wife. It's not gonna be no mess when it come to my son's mom. Period. My daughter, daddy, the same way. This is what it is. When it comes to Nadia, she's going to be here. She's yeah. not going anywhere. If you wanted me to have a sit down, fine, but you're not going to cause no drama when it comes to her. Mm-hmm. Period. You hate me for it, but it is you're what it right. is because he and I have established that relationship. Like, look, I don't care who you date. He don't care who I date. Mm-hmm. But no, I'm daddy. She's mm-hmm. mommy. And we're going to be around. You want to come to the function? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't come with no mess. Okay, mommy. So your mommy. How how is it being mom? You love I being a mommy. I love it. I I will tell you the most development that I've gotten. I wouldn't say it's come in character building. It didn't come from West Point and all those you know different rooms that I found myself in. It has been raising my girls. Um, they have a way of holding a mirror up to you. Oh, don't they? Oh, yes, Lord. God. Girl, and you see the best in you and you see the, the worst, worst in you. Yes, you do. And because you want to correct them, but you're like, oh, but they get that from, from me. me. Yeah. So let me check myself first before I go to you. Let me get my things in order. Mm-hmm. And also, I'm going to go to you and be honest and say, you know what? Mommy has this bad habit of doing this. And I don't like it. And I'm seeing you, you're doing it now. And I don't like it either. So let's let's both work on this. Let's get better. I like and, and when I'm doing it, I want you to call me out on it. And when I see you doing it, I'm going to call you out on it. So we can hold each other accountable. Mm-hmm. Um, but they just, you know, when I'm obsessed being the best version of Tracy, it's because I want to show up the best 
from my girls and my husband. Like they, and so I just, I love being a mom. I just, I love it. Um, I wish I could be uh, just a full-time stay-at-home mom, but mm -hmm. I know that's just not me. Definitely. Um, that's not what I, you know, be crazy to. But when I have those moments where it is just all about them, that's when I'm at my happiest. So how do you find the time to even... Make it, honey. Eat? Listen. You make that's it. All you got to say. That's it. You do make you, it. Do you, you sleep? Do you sleep? I do. Oh, okay. You get a whole eight hours. I do. I do now. <laughs> oh, okay. I do now. Listen. But so, again, you got to so, get to so that point, Can we point, get real? Though. Can we yes, get real? Yes. You're right. You're so right. Um, it's like when I hit my 40s, I feel like a light bulb just went off. I'm ready. Went off. And... I was like, you know, I'm all about like, oh, securing the bag, get that bag, and about the grind, the grind. There is no glory in that grind, y'all. I'm just telling mm -hmm. y'all. Mm -hmm. It is I like that. Works, There's no glory in the grind. There is a shirt. Work smarter, not harder. Mm -hmm. Right? We feel like because we wearing ourselves out, like we're being martyrs or yep. something. It's like, yep. you don't get a trophy for that. All no, you, you don't. doing is aging quicker, and everybody around you mad because you stressed out. Mm -hmm. So... I was working with my coach and she had me list out. She said, Tracy, what are the things that are most important to you? So I started writing it out. And she said, now, write out on the, on the other side of the column, what do you spend most of your day doing? And the things that are the most important to me are the things that I'm giving the least amount of my attention to. What sense does that make? And so I was like, I'm going to create the world that I want, the life that I want. And at the center of it needs to be my husband and my children, right? And I was just like, and I was just, I was in a place where I'm just like, God, I'm searching for peace. I'm searching for peace and I'm searching for just, I want to get into life's rhythm. I felt like I've just been swimming upstream my whole life. And I was like, I just want to flow with the river. Teach me, God, what is that soft living like? What is that like? Because I don't know it. I don't know it. All, I've, you know, like, all my life I had to fight. fight. Right? <laughs> if, if, if it was a person, boom, mm -hmm. right? And I was just like, I don't want that anymore. I don't want that anymore. And so I had to just release a lot of things, again, back to restoration of faith. And I was just like, God, I'm going to believe that when I put out there into the universe what I want, mm -hmm. you're going to find a way to bring to it make back it to happen, me. Yeah. And can I tell you, our God is faithful. Our God is good. Because it started coming so fast. I was just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what, what, is what, is what, what if I was kidding? What if I ain't really mean it? Now I'm getting scarred. <laughs> Listen, yep. um, but that goes back to just like, this is the way that it's supposed to be. And I would tell you, you know, blood pressure, stress, like I'm the person that's like every two to three hours, I'm waking up, checking emails, checking because I'm running global operations. Mm -hmm. It's daytime somewhere in the world, you know, and so I always feeling like you're missing something. And, you know, if I were was able to attend something that the girls were doing. I'm not really there because mm -hmm. I'm in my phone checking emails, answering, putting out fires. So physically I'm there, but not totally, you know, mm -hmm. in the moment. And so I just had to switch it up. And like I said, there is no glory in the grind. It's like, no, like, sis, put some life back, some years back on your life and just figure out how to flow with the river. I could tell you flowing because, sis, your skin is <laughs> flawless. <laughs> like, <Thank> you. <laughs> Um, you were saying you had to get to that point with your sleep. What you mean? To get to, no, get to the point where you're able to be present for yourself and your oh. kids. Because mm. it's, it's a lot. Ooh, it's a, to be a, to be, and don't get it twisted, I have a very good co-parent. But majority of the parenting and the time comes from me. Mm -hmm. Because we live in two separate households. So it comes from me. So I have to take in even going back to when I was in school, I had to work. And I was working in an office, but I had to work, take care of an infant, and I was going to school mm. every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Some days it was it looked like, <laughs> but I did it, you know, and mm. now it's, I still work. I just finished school, but I still have to be a mom, then I still have to make time for the things that she likes. But then I also have to, not outside of just the mommy, but I have to cultivate the mommy and daughter relationship. Like we gotta do stuff together. Mm -hmm. We gotta go places together. So what does that look like? What does it look like when she come home from school? When she come home from school and is it safe? Is it calm for her? Mm -hmm. Is it 
You know, it just looks it's always it's always yep. it's a nonstop job. So you have to try to figure out like the days like on Sundays and be like, I want to no, know. I don't want to do nothing today. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing nothing today mm-hmm. unless I want to do it. Mm-hmm. Don't ask me. Because I'm, yeah. I'm probably going to say no, because this is me and her time to chill. If she gotcha. said, Mommy, can we do something? Cool. And some days I'm, it's going to look like, no, Mommy, not, don't want to do that right now. Um, because I just need a me day and we can do some some light, watch TV and <laughs> make some cookies <laughs> together. Yeah, and then, then we're going to chill and ch- chill out. But I still have to incorporate mm-hmm. her because in, she's a little kid, you know. Yeah. So I still have to co- incorporate her in it, but still also keep time for myself, too. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. I don't regret it. I, I absolutely love it. Like I always say, it's the greatest badge of honor for me. Um and like I agree with what you said. It taught me everything. No character train, no trainings, no conference, no conversation could ever, could have ever taught me or prepared me for what motherhood looks like Let for me, me today. Mm. No book, no nothing. No, mm-hmm. because it's, there is no manual. No, There's no manual to, for for that. And every child is different. And every child is different. So I can imagine what it's like with you working. And your husband working and you, you all trying to establish y'all place in on this world, planet. Yeah. Now you have three different personalities that you also have to cater to. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, it looks different for everybody, but I, that's commendable. For real. I appreciate it. Because you're doing Man, that thing. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, it's, it's the grace of God. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> that's like, because don't that's know. all it is. And her you don't even know. Too. You can't wake up and be like, He's how are we going to do this today? <laughs> right. Even if you set a plan out for it, it ain't going to go like that. You're so right. <laughs> nope, it's not. Nadia it's not going to go like that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what my, Mama Nadia said. You better wake up and say, what would you have me to do today? What, what would you have me to do say today? You what do you want us to do today? To How do you want it yes. to get done? And that's because it. the that's moment you set a plan and say, all right, we're going to do this. It's look, not that car right there, I thought I was going somewhere and I left the church on Sunday. I was like, this thing ain't started. I wouldn't. It, it, it's just not in the plan that my car wasn't going to start. So everything that I had planned had, to go, had to go out the get, door. Yeah. Now money got to go into the car that you want to play. So I get it. That's why I be like, God, that's why I sit there and was like, well, I'm just going to wait. Because now I'm there. Somebody like, said, yeah, whatever happens, you, just go with it. You always, go with it. all you do is, what she said, all you focus on is being a mom. I said, that was an insult to me. Oh. I don't even want to talk to you no more. <laughs> what does that even mean? Well, who are you, just, to, who yeah, are you like, to say that? You, you have you zero experience. Zero information or know how about what I'm doing. Right. You don't know. You you never lived this life. Mm. But it's a compliment wrapped in the one too. It. I mean, it is. Yeah. But still, I That's don't want to talk it. No. I feel you. But it was the intent. Yeah, it was the intention. Definitely. I, I get that it was wrong. But understand, your focus on being a mommy has has. I mean, is JC JC finna be so good. JC is a whole you don't understand. in these streets. Like, I want you to understand. You don't JC, JC is she's eight. She's eight. She's and she's in the she in the new movie, Color Purple with Oprah, y'all. Yes. She got interviewed by Oprah and everything. So so JC is That's beautiful. Like, but she's that's, a different kind of kid. When you know you have somebody and, and this is you know what, I ain't even gonna down I'm not gonna downplay it. My daughter's great. There you go. She's going to be great. Mm -hmm. But I knew when I prayed for her that she was going to come in this world different. Mm -hmm. So I have to hone on in onto that, tap into that and Mm -hmm. allow her Mm -hmm. to be who she is. Mm -hmm. So with her being who she is, I have to make sure that environment is healthy for her to be in so that she can be who God already ordained her now to that's be. that's a mama, y'all. Yes. <laughs> and she a real one. Let me tell Absolutely. you. But it's, Absolutely. But it's, it, it go, it's a lot when you're a kid, when you know you got a kid that's different. Mm-hmm. It's a lot on you. Like, it's, all right, God, you ain't just give me a it's, regular right, kid. Right, right. It's like <laughs> a dime. No, you give me just that, like, yeah. I got to hold yeah, this. And I pray that, and that's my daily prayer. Like, God, let me do well and right by her while I have her. Mm-hmm. Because I know that she's not mine. She's mm-hmm. yours. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's my daily Thought process when I'm raising her, even though we play a lot, because y'all do <laughs> all day. We play, <laughs> we play a lot, but she knows. And any any room she walk in, any teacher, any coach is gonna say, "JC is the most well behaved kid I've ever seen." There you go. Because you, all you gonna say is home. too much. It's too much. <laughs> or that look. too much. <laughs> she be like, 
Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Too much, Jay. All right. So, you no. But it's, it. it's mommy hood, though. To Joy, to Tracy, is to all the mommies, it's a badge of honor. Like, I don't ever want nobody to feel like it's just too much. It's not, it's, it's, it's an honor to be a mom. Even if that kid didn't, wasn't brought to life by you, it's a, it's an honor to, to be a mom. I love it, child. Cause they're literally so. a blank slate and your actions and your inactions are not just writing on that blank slate. Like it, you're etching yep. into that. It's a print every it is time. A, yep. There you go. There every you time. go. It is. It's, 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 it's heavy. Oh, so yeah, I, I appreciate all moms because I'm <laughs> not one. <laughs> are you a super <laughs> auntie? Glorified oh, auntie. She is a, a, she's a uh, god mom. She's a god mom. day. For sure. But I just appreciate y'all because I see what y'all do. Mm -hmm. And I take on my nieces and nephews and, you know, my godson. And I be like, <laughs> you ain't even mine. And you just over here wilding. But I love, <laughs> I love them to kingdom come. And just the fact that how I love them, it got to be times oh, a million sure. with y'all. It's over with How me. I worry is a million. How mm -hmm. I love and how I'm very protective time a thousand million trillion right. so i appreciate my mom where you at mama i appreciate you girl <laughs> <laughs> you have to leave it like that appreciate hey, you Jesus girl Christ. she is crazy <laughs> really. anyway but, um <laughs> yeah so thank you thank you for coming you have anything else you want to say oh, oh this what is wait, wait 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 right yeah <laughs> It's the National Arts Black Arts. Na National Black Arts Festival. Mm -hmm. Okay, NBA. Yes, NBA. I, I follow you. You do. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Intr introduce yourself, yeah, Chrissy, the least. artist. So the artist. Yeah, I saw. Um, I think it was the event that it was either earlier this year or last year was the Black Tie event. And, yes, um, there are gala at the. I said season. I'm gonna be on that next year. So mm -hmm. October seventh. All right. Oh! Wait, October is 7th? it black tie? It is. It is. It is. We've been wanting to go to a black tie art event since I met her. Well, we just was <laughs> talking did. about black tie and we were talking Yay. about how to conduct yourself in a room in a uh, black tie event mm -hmm. or in any or not. <laughs> or you want to go in there and be no, otherwise. I wanna, I, we want to go. We want to so, be in the business. Yeah. I'll be my sister's keeper. We can make it happen. I uh, will roll it all out. We can talk about, you know, the um, the dates, all those things, the protocol. We do a uh, our, our galas are known for um, our color themes. And so mm. this year, um, last year was like a magenta. Yes, Ooh. I love that. This year um, is uh, shades of brown. Oh. So it's when, when, when I tell you the decor, everything is just like, so Milky first of and all, and we're ODing on black excellence. Uh -huh. and yes. B, it is just Decadent. That is the way to describe the color scheme mm -hmm. of like the whole room. It is you got your deep chocolates, your silks, your oh my, it is just beautiful. It is going to be um an elaborate showing. Um it's 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 at the exchange ballroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's uh mbf.org. Go there. You can get all the information about the gala, um, all of our events. Yes, mbf. Yep, mbf. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. You're welcome. What's a takeaway that you would give us as women um, as far as existing in a world that's not what it used to be and that's ever changing as far as um, professionalism mm -hmm. and um, entrepreneurship? I would say no matter what room that I would step into, and most of the time I was the youngest, um, the only person who was black, and oftentimes the only female, um, you should always know the room, um, study your rooms, and show up appropriately in those rooms, but always be true to yourself. What you won't check, catch Tracy doing is just switching. Like Tracy is always going to be Tracy, no matter what room that I show up in. However, um, I say however, but with that, uh, understanding 
what parts are louder within Tracy's personality, depending on the room that I'm in. But I'm always going to be Tracy. And the other thing that I would also want to say is something that we don't do as black women. Uh, we're not kind to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we've got to get to a place where we can just become kind to ourselves. If we can be kind to ourselves, guess what? The world really ain't that bad. It's not. It's not that bad. It's, not. it's because we're already poisoning ourselves with all this negative talk that when something does, when something comes in front of us or we have an, an affront, mm -hmm. right, of some sort, it gets magnified because it's layering already on all the negativity and the, the self-doubt or mm -hmm. all the things that we allow to permeate in our brains. And so when you miss, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay. I always tell people, if you fail, it's okay. It's not a failure if you learn from it, right? right. And if that's the case, then fail to success. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, just keep, yeah. you're going to get there, but you won't get there if at, in the first place you're not kind to yourself. So I would mm -hmm. always say lead with compassion, show people compassion, and show yourself. And if you mm -hmm. can do the work inside and showing yourself grace and love, it'll automatically yeah. come out. There was a, um, a clip on Instagram that a woman said, allow yourself five fails a day. Mm. So if you fail three times, like, well, I still got two more. Right. Or if you didn't fail at all, like, hey, look what I did. Right. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and if you get six this day, you're like, I'm right. exceptional. Right. Right. <laughs> being exceptional today. Right. right, that's it. It's just, it's just being, we just have to do a better job of being kind to ourselves. And, and that comes to grinding. Mm -hmm. You're not being kind to yourself when you're grinding. Right. You're not being kind to yourself. You're not. Just think of what grinding actually is right, right. the actual <laughs> thing of just practice well it depends on which one but okay here we go <laughs> not all grinds yeah, are bad no, it's not all created equal well, that's why I'm here. <laughs> not all of them <laughs> okay <laughs> that's funny <laughs> so, Shondo, um okay but thank you for coming thank you and um thank you man we'll definitely connect oh. again hopefully we this can all do good. dinner or something Oh, that'd be nice. And you give us some marriage advice. Say, ma'am. Boom. Um, <laughs> so thank y'all for tuning in. Come on, y'all. Oh, tell the people. T tell them thank you. Thank you. We appreciate <laughs> y'all, my boy. So <laughs> no matter what you do, no matter where you go, no matter how you grow, oh, baby, you. there is always room for who? You. you right here on the couch. Thank you, pew, pew. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, you a fool for this one?